I can just kick off, right? So welcome for joining me in the virtual meeting room. Uh, good now, as I like to say, because if I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, it could be anywhere. So I like to say good now, whenever and wherever you are. My name's Daryl as a service, and I'm running a, a very raw um, live I was trying to think of this sort of, I like to toy with words. So we think about live and learn, and that we live and we learn through life, but I'm thinking about live and learn. I know it doesn't read very well, but the way you say it, it's about doing things live and, and not really expecting perfection, but just going through and sharing that real experience. Um, so that's what we're going to try and do. Now some of you are joining me via Periscope, some of you are joining via uh, YouTube, and maybe if I can click in here, some might be joining via... Uh, LinkedIn, let's see what that audience is like there too. Yeah, a couple of people joining there as well. Um, the goal for today is really to kick the series off. Um, don't expect me to get everything perfect. Uh, and I think this is true of, of our journey when we're trying anything out as IT pros, as people that are exploring technology. We just get in there and try it. Um, hopefully we're not doing this uh, live and in front of uh, key stakeholders and key decision makers, but yeah, live it, live in, live and learn. Yeah, live in. We'll go with that, Tom. <laughs> um, we, we like to try and learn things as we go, and so this is what I'm going to try and do with us today and as a series. I'm going to try and go through installing the, the Learning Pathways portal, Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways, and we'll start building out a portal in this series. I might get a, uh, a regular time or cadence going, uh, hopefully at least once a week, and uh, let me know in the chat too if you'd like to <clears throat> see this shift a, a forward a day. Um, but this is about the time that I can run it during, during New Zealand hours. Right, so what is Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways? Um, when it was first uh, released, it was called Custom Learning, and we heard it talked about probably even at last Ignite uh, as a, a site that we could bring in the uh, Microsoft Learning support resources from, uh, from their sites into our own environments. And uh, there's been some people hard at work that have, have been trying to, to make this work. Um, it is a GitHub project, so don't let that scare you. For those of you who are not familiar with GitHub, I'm, I'm not a big fan of GitHub myself. I don't dive in there and do any development. But GitHub has been used as a great way to open source all sorts of things, not just development, but information, documents, processes, and all sorts of things. So this, this solution, it was called Custom Learning, and the goal of it is to try and bring in those resources into your environment. So that, what's the main challenge here? That we, we struggle to try and keep our learning resources up to date. Now, I've often thought of Office 365 over the years that um, the onus should be on the people making the software to keep our, the resources up to date. Because things are changing so fast in the cloud how the heck am I supposed to keep these resources up to date? I might create a guide, and I know there's a few people that are watching this video that will relate to this, that um, I'll create this guide, I'll do all the resources, I'll cut, uh, copy and paste screenshots, I might even create a few short videos, and it's all about trying to um, you know, give people some familiarity with what they see versus their real experience. And then the cloud happens. Now, that's not a negative thing in a sense, because we do like to receive the latest capabilities, not to overwhelm people, but to just continue to improve. If you think about the, the way that we receive software now, it's, it's sort of in steps, right? It's not this massive cliff that we have to climb every three years and everyone has to get used to what are all these new features and things that we've got to, got to use and... Likewise with all the IT pros, they've got to figure out how to manage all this stuff. It's now these little incremental steps. So once you're in the cloud, you're getting this all the time. So it should be this gradual um, climb up there. Broadcast reported. Well done for putting yourself out there. Sweet. Thanks, mate. Um, so that's the goal, really, of, of trying to uh, take advantage of the cloud. But on the learning side, that's the tricky part. Because people, um, not everyone is as adaptable as we'd like. We know that IT pros can pick things up pretty easily because that's just the way that we work. But we can't expect that of everyone. We might see champions and, and people that are naturally uh, excited about technology that would like to you know, get on in there and, 
uh, you know, try things out. But for the most part, our organizations are, you know, they're focused on their work. So Learning Pathways is about trying to bring those resources into your environments and Microsoft is responsible for keeping them up to date because they're writing the software. They know what's coming. All right, so let's crack into it. You've seen enough of me and maybe you're looking at this background and going, oh, I wish I was going to ignite. The, the other side comment I'll say here that the Regardian 365 team, that's, that's us from last year. Um, we're hoping to bring some of this uh, content and experience to you as well and I'm sure there'll be people like um, Tom Arbuthnot and a few others in the community that will be doing the same so so do look out for that. Right so what are we going to look at? Let's uh, try and explain some of uh, learning pathways and flick around with these scenes. So this is a blog post from Kuruana Gotimu. Um, it's in the Microsoft uh, tech community. And if you do want to find out a bit about this and join in some of the discussion, then you want to go into the driving adoption community. All right, so I won't step through and try and show you where to find it. Just know that if you go into communities, whoops, I did it, I clicked it. You go into communities, you look for, for all the many different communities that are available there, you will find a driving adoption community. And um, then the drive-in adoption blog is what we're seeing here, outline um, the content. So let's just interrupt that and not let it reload. But this this uh, is something of a, a launch to say, hey, here's this this beta preview. I, I'm kind of laughing at that because um, for a while, for a long time, we used to call new software that we're trying things out before it's live. We used to call them beta, and then we started to shift into this thing called preview and live previews. Not live previews. What was it called again? Just early previews, I forget, like the, the preview program. Um, you could get a private preview, so you might be a company that's been invited in to see stuff really early to give that feedback. But I don't often see beta and preview together anymore. Anyway, it, it was called Custom Learning um, for Office 365, and um, this blog post details it. So um, feel free to go and find that. I might drop it in the, in the comments a bit later on. Hey, Brandon, how you doing? Um, so, this is, you know, this is, I'm trying to show this one here to give you an idea of what it will look like as we get into it. But let's get straight into installing it because I, I do want to try and guide us through this and, and try and show you in a bit of real time. There has been some preparation for me to do this. So let's go to another page that uh, outlines some of the, the key things about this. You'll find all the resources about learning pathways uh, start generally in docs. Uh, docs.microsoft.com um, and there are a few ways to provision it right so the goal here is that we're bringing it into our SharePoint environment and we're leveraging um, the communication sites that we might have so you might have an option where you want to uh, put it, the, the learning pathways functionality into sites that you already have you've already been hard at work working at that or you can use the provisioning engine, and um, this is a PNP provisioning, patterns and practice, I believe it's still called, um, to to bring this content into into your environment. Now I'm going to step through the the most basic way to do this, which is um, the PNP way. This this version here, um, and you can actually, when you install it, it becomes part of your environment, so you can use the same web part and infrastructure underneath to bring the uh, the learning pathways and playlists and custom playlists that you might create into other areas in your environment. It's really quite clever. So we'll see we'll see a bit about that. Now let's go into some of the um, prerequisites. So I'm provisioning it using uh, learning provisioning learning pathways and some prerequisites here are around. Uh, first of all, the person who's installing this needs to be a tenant admin. Uh, because you need to sign into the PNP site and have the permissions uh, required to go in and set up things in the app catalog, which we'll see what that is soon. Um, uh, potentially create a new site and, and give that a name. Um, you'll be installing the app as well. So it, it is a role that, that you'll need to have, the tenant admin. Um, this next uh, requirement here is to have the app catalog and the interesting thing I was trying to put this all together and prepare it last night I'm using a, um, a customer immersion environment from Microsoft great uh, resource here thank you Microsoft for helping us to quickly demonstrate things I've created a, a, a tenant that's available for me for a whole year and I was trying to create the app catalog now what is the app catalog 
if you haven't worked with SharePoint before, it's a place where you can bring in different web parts and applications that have been developed for SharePoint and, and use that to provision out to the different sites within your environment. And look, I don't know, I don't have a deep knowledge of, of much else. The first time I started using it was for uh, the OneNote class notebook when it used to be provisioned that way. It used to be brought into your SharePoint environment and then pushed out to all the classroom sites. So a very clever thing um, and a great way to deploy and you need that catalog in place. Um, how are we doing here people? I, I see a few comments here and there so just feel free to, to jump in, in in the chat and, and let me know. Um, not a lot of action over here on, on YouTube but hopefully it's pushing off to uh, to there so we can see that video uh, later on. I might take it down and chop it up a bit and, and make it a bit smoother. But thanks for everyone joining. Right, so continuing, um, we've got a third requirement here. The person provisioning the learning pathways must be a site collection owner or ten of the tenant app catalog, right? So if you're, if you're a global admin, if you're a tenant admin, that's gonna cover most bases. Now uh, we're going to go through to provisioning from the uh, PNP site, uh, just to quickly go through some of these instructions here, just, just as a high level and then we'll step through it. Um, this is a point where you're going to be asked, uh, ah, forget it, let's just get into it. We'll get into it, because rather than explain it, let's uh, just step through. Now I do have to grab some details from um, my learning environment. Um, right, so we'll be copying and pasting some details in there. Uh, there we go, credentials. All right. Okay, where did I open this up? All right, so we've got our uh, provisioning service. Now the PNP site is used for a number of different things. Um, in this case here, you could use it to drop in some demo content into your own environment. But I'm going to get into looking at, oh, I've reorganized this. Let's go into solutions. Here we go, solutions. And we're looking for Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways. Oh, there's some stuff in here that I kind of want to look at too, but we'll, we'll have a look at that later. Another time, another place. Um, launching on into Learning Pathways. So it's going to give you the same kind of spiel about what it is and why. Um, there are some resources, as you'd see here, that are going to go off to GitHub, and we'll open those up soon after, after the... Um, after we've installed it. It does take a little while, so maybe we won't see the finished product. Let's get it rocking. Add to your tenant. Right, make sure that I've got our details copied over here. Oh good, so it has picked up the, uh, the login that I have signed in with. So if you are doing that in the same session, then there you go. So we're signed in as the very famous Megan Bowen, who um, she just seems to be working everywhere in all these demos and environments. She must be flat out. Um, it's asking for a bunch of different permissions and uh, look, it's kind of like this. If you're buying really expensive software um, and then you get to that point, or like let's say it's like the latest Surface, so maybe you're, you're lucky enough at some point to get one of the new Surface laptops or the Surface Studio or Surface X Pro, um, and, and this license agreement comes up and says, do you agree to this license? And you go, well, actually, I've got a problem with that and that. So I'm going to give it back to my lawyer and, well, you know that thousands of dollars that I just spent on this device? Yeah, okay, I'll just put it off to the shelf. No, all right, so we, we are going to trust that this is uh, everything that we need. But if you, if you need to for legal purposes, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not saying go through and do, do this and accept everything, um, but check this out for due diligence and you'll see whether or not you, um, if it's suitable for your environment. All right, continuing, accept. So we're getting those permissions and giving it to the service to say, yes, you're allowed to go into the environment, into my tenants, and start um, creating things. All right, so let's uh, keep on going here. I don't know if you're hearing this, but I'm in a little office here which has got literally no insulation. So if you do hear a, a little like a ah going on in the background, it is not the thousands of people that are cheering me on. It's actually rain. <laughs> it's rain at the moment. Any of you have uh, jumped into some of my live streams uh, with uh, Daniel Glenn and the 365 Message Center show or stuff that they're regarding 365 team too, um, you probably would have heard that. Right, provisioning, usage tracking, okay. So uh, there is, um, well this section here, and I will explain a bit about this, uh, as you're installing it, there is a component of the, of the provisioning 
not the provision in service, so the learning pathways, which will give a bit of telemetry back to the team that are developing that. Um, if that's not really something that you would like to help with as part of your organization, there are some steps there to, to opt out of that telemetry. You'll still get the benefits of the, the service, of the learning pathway service, but um, you'll be opting out of sending a trickle of information about how it's been used. Right, so a notification email. Um, provide an email address so that the provisioning service can send something and say, all done, okay? Um, and here's the point where <laughs> I want to bring this up, okay? How many of you have been told, go forth and implement Office 365 for our organization? Go ahead. Um, and so you've fired it all up and, and maybe you've been put under pressure. It could be any service, actually. And there hasn't been much, if any, thought given to what are we going to call this thing? And you come to a point in the installation process or provisioning where it says, give it a name. And you're like, uh, 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 blah, 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 blah. And or, oops, that one's taken. Someone's already taken our business name. Someone's already taken this and that. Oh, I'll just put one at the end and we'll fix it later. Hmm. Yeah. I used to be involved in some tenant migrations, which were all about changing from the name that they uh, chose at the beginning to what they would really like. Uh, sometimes you've come up with all sorts of different um, things. Anyway, back to this. Um, learning pathways. You could go with the default, but what I want you to think about, uh, if you haven't done this yet, think about how you want this to be represented to your organization. What's in a name? Everything is in a name, especially if you're trying to help people adopt uh, Microsoft 365. You're trying to help this feel like it is theirs and their environment. So that's why we don't call our intranets, oh, uh, come to uh, SharePoint home or um, uh, Datacom SharePoint or something like that. We actually give it some, some kind of name that people can relate to. Sometimes we give it a... Um, a, uh, a competition to try and figure out what what is actually good to um, good to call it. So give this some thought before you jump in here. Um, they do give some suggestions that it could be you know focused around Microsoft 365 Learning. This default one that we've got here is Office 365 O365 Custom Learning. <laughs> so that's a, a hangover from the previous uh, name that it had. But what I've been seeing with our customers and people that I've worked with is that it's really handy to call this site um, something more than just focused on Microsoft 365. Because as we get into building this out over the video series and the, the live and learn series that I'll be trying to do, um, you will find that you want to use this for more. You might want to use this for um, onboarding people and it could include uh, other training, other materials, other pages and videos and things that you create and other engaging experiences that are wider than Microsoft 365. So let's just call this um, Digital Workplace Guide. Yeah. All right, so that's just something that I'm going to whack in there as, as a way of doing that. Uh, and provision. Oh, okay. Validate, validating site URL. So, should be checking to see if it's existing. And because I was quick to the trigger, I hit the provision button in the background. That's gone gray. <laughs> so, it has determined that there is no site called this and it's uh, looking to try and install this. Prerequisites not pre fulfilled. Okay, current configuration, tenant does not satisfy. In order to provision, you need to have full control permissions on the app catalog. Really? Uh, okay, forgive me for this. What I'm going to do is just open up a... Oh dear, oh dear. Always fun, let's just do this. See, here's the thing, like, I... I don't understand that because Megan Bowen in all these demo environments is a full admin. Please configure the app security settings and try again. Oh, let's try that. Let's just have a look. Right, so we'll go into our app catalog home. App catalog, security settings. Um, oh, actually, that's a point. Look at that. So already 
Gee, fail, Daryl. Gee. Site content. Site usage. Yes, yeah, so she's not even a. Oh, she's not even a. a um, not even a, a an admin of that. Okay, well let's let's just shortcut this. Let's just dive in as uh, L. This is the problem. See, I, I provisioned the app catalog using the uh, admin account for the tenant, An entirely different account, but still with the same permissions. And I expect that that app catalog would have. Um, let's go into. There we go. Grab that provisioning address here. Starting that process quickly again. Yeah, so if you've uh, provisioned the app catalog with uh, one account and then you say, hey, um, Megan, can you go and do this? You've got global admin rights, right? That should work. Apparently not. So let's go back in with that account. Add to your tenants. Okay, and we'll see if we can race through these steps quickly. Because we want to get it, get this going, but to be honest, we're going to get to a point where we'll kick off the provisioning process, and in the next episode, we'll have a look at the the results. Um, because I don't expect that it will get through this in um, the time that we have left. Um, there we go. Right. So admin, admin, admin. Yes. Uh, digital workspace guide. Workplace then. Workplace guide. Provision, validate in URL. We know it's not going to cause us a problem, but let's see. <laughs> um, I am almost tempted to jump on over to here and just copy in that URL to another tab and to confirm that the global admin actually has permission Ech, come on scram yeah this is looking better right so we didn't see any of the site settings options for Megan because she was not a site owner of the app catalog but our tenant admin is all right there we go that's what we should see apologies people but hey it's rough and raw and maybe this has helped to point out that there is a little more than just uh, rushing on through this that we are figuring things out all right so we've got what are, what has been provisioned the learning pathways solution that we talked about and this is going to be a, a, a web part and an infrastructure underneath some apps and uh, lists in the background all sorts of cool stuff that's going to be uh, helping in that sense um, we've got communication site holding the learning pathways content. So the name that we're giving it, Digital Workplace Guide, um, it's going to create a modern communication site and it's going to use that to, um, to present the content and, and contain it. And you know, the interesting thing is that when, uh, when we go ahead and provision that, all right, so it is going to do this, it'll come out with this communication site and there'll be some custom content in there to let you know that yes, this is not just a standard out of the box um, communication site. It does have some placeholders for learning pathways content and it gives you a few ideas um, by starting off with some of the existing products. Um, so I'll be stepping through that to, in the next session, which I really should have queued up and created that on YouTube so I could put it up in the corner and people could find it. We'll have to do that later. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll be going through the out-of-the-box experience. So once it is provisioned, then we can see, you know, what do we start with and, and what are we going to go into here? Um, so this is going to take a little while. Uh, let me just... Uh, we, won't, we won't know. I get really nervous when I do that. Hey, like if you're, if, if you're almost supposed to keep this open um, because if you don't, then it, it's going to be a problem. So actually, let's just read that. Um, provisioning process, yeah, it has started. Actually, provisioning uh, can take a while, yeah. Uh, you will get an email from SharePoint, right? Yep, yep, provisioning in progress. Um, would be really nice, just as feedback, 
um, Microsoft to, to drop on this page. Uh, it is safe to close this page. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to, just in case. Uh, I believe that you can because you're supposed to get an email a bit later. I don't expect that um, I'd have to keep this page open. But anyway, um, let's get back to a couple of things just to finish off. So there'd been an email sent off to the admin mailbox. I was hoping it would be Megan. Um, and that would uh, show the process. Right, so we've stepped through it. We've gone to provisioning, um, uh, the provisioning site. We've made sure that we're doing this as a tenant admin, not Megan, who apparently, um, she is a tenant admin, but she also needed to have access to the app catalog uh, and have uh, site ownership of that. Um, person provisioning has to be a site collection owner of the tenant catalog, so that's the, the last one there, right? So we stepped through and we saw all of this we chose custom learning, we added to our tenant, we gave it a name, and, um, and then it goes through and we uh, will be able to validate that. So um, as it, it gets to that point, we'll get the email. Um, there is a, a link here, as you can see, it's got a, a few placeholders um, for you to go in and, and check that the learning pathways is actually um, uh, working. Uh, it is a um, an administration part of the the pathways where you can go in and you can see the uh, playlists that are available. You can create resources. You can point to all sorts of various things, and that's like a final check to say yes, everything has been provisioned. Um, so I'll go back in afterwards, and I'll, of course I'll add Megan as a site owner because at the moment it'll be provisioning using the tenant admin, and th it'll be all assumed that that's the the admin to begin with. So we'll do that, um, and then we'll uh, go through and explore the default content in the next episode. Um, so that is the provisioning process. Um, it is pretty straightforward if you're just trying to install this into your um, environment as a, as a fresh site collection. Uh, if you do have a site collection that you've put a lot of work into, um, then because it's going into this thing called the app catalog, it allows you to be able to publish that app into a site that you've already created. Some of us have gone ahead before the solution and we've tried to create our own content and we might have been using the SharePoint uh, communication site uh, to communicate about the project and um, to organize live events where people can come along and learn and, and the like. Um, so you might want to take uh, the other route of publishing the, the learning pathways uh, mechanism, the web part and, and the app into that existing site. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have a look at, at the results uh, next time. Uh, how does um, Thursday sound? Well, it's Thursday in the US at the moment, isn't it? And probably most of Europe. It's Friday here in New Zealand. Um, how about Wednesday? Should I send a, um, a, a fine time meeting invite out to everyone on, on the tube um, and everyone watching. I'm not asking to drop in your email addresses or anything, but I, I'm going to aim at trying to run this a day earlier next week. Um, Ignite is fast approaching. There's a few things I still want to get through before I, um, before I present some of this at Ignite. I do continue, I will continue to, do, to step through some of this after Ignite. Um, the session that I'm running there, it's an unconference session. So if you are coming along to, uh, to Microsoft Ignite, it is UNC 1028. And the goal with an unconference is it's not about me presenting, it's about me facilitating. I'll get up there and we'll set up the session and we'll say, here's, here's how it's going to operate. Here's a few things to inspire you about what a, a learning pathway site is all about. But the goal of the session is for you to come along and uh, to, to think about some of the things that you would like to put into a learning pathway site. Hopefully some of the people at the tables will, will already be on this journey like me and they'll have a few things to show. And they might say, here's what we learned in the process or here's how we're using it to onboard new staffers or this is how we're running um, live events to try and make our, our um, learning sessions more accessible to everyone. Lots of possibilities that we're going to explore in this series. Thanks to everyone who has joined and, and actually hung in there. It's been really quite cool to see the audience that have hung in there, both on LinkedIn and uh, in Periscope. 
I know that the YouTube audience uh, tends to be um, people who are, are, are run and gun and they prefer to watch um, people burning mattresses and jumping off stupid things. Um, my niche audience is, is all about technology and about productivity. I'm an adoption specialist and so that's why you'll find me doing this kind of stuff. Anyway, cheers for, um, for tuning in and uh, let's see if we can play an outro if I can find the right button. Um, keep an eye out for for the next session. Um, if you're really keen to try and you know subscribe and understand when I'm going to be doing these things, um, there isn't really a subscription mechanism that I can use within Twitter because that's something you pay for. Remember the Surface event where there was this tweet you could say, um, what did you do? I think you either you liked the tweet and then it would send you a reminder via Twitter. That costs something. But um, the way that I'm using it, I use YouTube and if you subscribe to the channel, you can hit the uh, notification bell and then you'll get a notification to say that I've set up a next live event. So that's uh, Daryl as a service. Actually, should I just try and bring that up? I know it probably seems a... Uh, it's probably the best way to um, promote it. YouTube.com forward slash Daryl as a service. Douche, kadoosh. The whooshy finger. There we go. And if you hit up on there, then the the live event will, um, if I've got one queued up, will sort of sit there along the top. So subscribing. Um, let's do it. Hey Megan. Yeah, sure. Why not? Subscribe. Um, there'll be a bell there, and then you'll get that notification. Anyway, thanks again for joining in. Um, see you next time. Bye for now. Outro.